Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and next up on this week's show, we have a smallmouth story from Lake St. Clair, where I was able to hit the water with an avid bass angler who even makes his own tackle. I've been fishing Lake St. Clair now for roughly about 10 years. Um, one of the reasons I like it, obviously, is because of the smallmouth. Uh, most people do. You can never go wrong with a good smallmouth. Um, basically, one of the reasons I started coming up here is a friend of mine got me started fishing some of the BFLs as a co-angler. And uh, all it took was one trip and one four-pound smallie, and, and uh, I was hooked. So uh, what I like about the lake is uh, the depth, obviously. you can pretty much run the lake and it's more or less in the summer uh, somewhat easy to find a good keeper fish. Um, there's always a lot of competition and there's some really good guys out here so if you're looking to improve your skills and see where you stand there's no better no better lake than Lake St. Clair. Lake St. Clair is one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the world and today we are hoping to catch the tail end of the spawning season and find a few fish still on beds. After a slow start, we were finally on the board about an hour in. That is about as small as they come here on St. Clair today. <laughs> but we're not going to complain. The name of the game is definitely uh, beds early in the year up here on St. Clair. Uh, if you're going to catch the pigs, you're going to get them on beds. Um, I do know a lot of guys that come up here pre-spawn, do a lot of jerkbait fish and spinner baits, and, uh, and they get them really good. But uh, I would say most people's favorite time is, is right here in bed season. Um, you just can't go wrong with the big smallie on a bed. The nice thing about Lake St. Clair is the size of the fish. But not only that, is uh, if you're not a real strong bed fisherman, I feel that you can come up and, and get within a foot or two of the bed when they're on it. And they'll definitely come out and get it. So you can get, uh, you can get right in a hurry. Well, we were finding plenty of beds today, but unfortunately, most of them were empty but we were managing to find a fish here and there as we continued the search for some more active beds. Well, basically right now we're in six to eight feet of water and, and when I'm looking for a bed, it depends basically on if I'm in grass or if I'm in sand. A lot of times if you're in sand and you're looking for, you know, smallies or large mouth that are on the beds, their beds are going to be dark spots, uh, contrasting the color of the sand usually. So when I buzz these shallows, I'm basically looking for dark patches. Um, more, more times than not, if you throw into a dark patch when you're out here on these sand spots, uh, you know, there'll be a fish there, or you hope to be. Um, but then, on the other hand, if I'm on another lake or body of water, and I'm in weeds, for instance, you usually look for the opposite, which you'd be looking for a, a white spot or a sand patch where they've cleared the, the weeds away. And uh, really not too difficult, that's basically it. You just want to cruise down, you have a good pair of polarized sunglasses and uh, keep your face to the water, and you'll find them. Curtis has been bass fishing for quite some time now and recently decided to try his hand in the tackle industry, creating Money Mouth Baits a few years back. Money Mouth Baits, uh, we've been going on for about three years now and uh, Basically how that came about is, um, you know, me being a local fisherman and everything, I've always been interested in the sport. And uh, it's always been a passion of mine to, to go ahead and, and uh, you know, start something like that. And uh, two years ago I got laid off from work and thought it's a great opportunity to go ahead and, and really focus and, you know, put everything I had into it. So uh, once I did that, it went ahead and, and kind of went from there. Um, basically we offer mainly plastics. Uh, tubes and stick baits. Uh, we have a beaver that's pretty hot right now, a lot of people are getting. Um, and other than that, you know, we have a double take that we make. It's a tandem swim bait. We sell swim baits as well, so, you know, they're a good pair. And uh, we do buzz baits. And, um, you know, it's just really taken off in the last couple of years and something we hope continues to grow.
little bit better size. A little more of what we're looking for. We start out in the morning down by the mouth of the Detroit River and uh, we had a horrible start to the day. One short little fish. It's a little mucky down there and kind of windy. Um, other than that, we ran back up. Just It'd be just west of Nine Mile and got into a couple little fish, but all the beds up there basically are empty today. So we were just scrounging around and we happened to come across this and hopefully we'll get a couple better ones. All in all, it had been a pretty slow day for Lake St. Clair standards, but persistence was paying off, and slowly but surely we were finding fish, something Curtis has been doing for quite some time. Well, basically I got started fishing uh, through a friend. Uh, my grandfather took me out bluegill fishing when I was little, so that was always a great start. Um, other than him, I'm really the only person in my family that fishes. So as growing up, I had a friend that uh, took me out. Him and his dad were big into bass fishing and uh, they got the bug in me. And after that, you know, it just progressed from there. I uh, took a little time off fishing as I was younger, obviously, finishing up school and everything. And then uh, when I had kids and got married, uh, it was a good pastime. That, that turned into a lifelong uh, addiction, I guess you could say. Um, as far as the bait company and, and making a lifelong passion, it's just, I found out that it's a good way to get into the circle of friends. It's a good way to uh, meet new people, uh, do fun, exciting things with guys named Jordan, and uh, and just move on. You know, it, it's something that allows me to travel and uh, just do a lot, of, you know, good experiences on good bodies of water. Although the fishing wasn't the best today, it was still a great day to be on the water. Special thanks to Curtis Warner for letting me tag along on a beautiful day here in Michigan's Out of Doors.